everyone and welcome to this video today about dream themes and understanding your dreams a little better. So first of all, why do we dream? Why do we see the movie-like images in our heads at night and why do we experience weird and wonderful dreams that seem to mean like nothing but could possibly mean so much? So hopefully this video answers some of your questions to what it is that you could be dreaming about and the messages behind it. So personally, I do believe spirit has the best kind of access to us through our subconscious at the evening when we're not filled with distractions of the day. So hence why meditation is recommended to connect to our higher selves is because we need to be able to uh, block out some of the distractions so that we can listen to our higher selves. So falling asleep at night, essentially, it, you know, we open up that stronger access to be able to communicate with our higher selves. So spirit can come in and deliver the messages that we may need to hear or understand or see and feel um, through our dreams. So very interesting. As a personal belief, I do think that we, uh, our dreams reflect our deepest emotions. So throughout our days, things bother us and we may get angry about this or upset about that or something makes us really happy or we might be remembering something from our childhood and you know little things that can come up but we tend to push it down throughout the day when we're very very busy and we don't have time to deal with whatever we need to deal with um, or whatever healing is trying to come up so that's why at night, at night we do dream about certain things that we haven't quite dealt with in our daily lives so this is a time where a lot of our wounding really comes up and so it gives us the opportunity to really start to work through it. I do personally believe that spirit does come in and encourage us to, to really work through the stuff we really need to work through when it comes through in our, in our form of dreams so to speak. So this information from this video is inspired by the book uh, Dream Things that I've had for many years. The poor book has been through the wars, as you can see, separated back, but I've kept it because I've loved it so much. Um, it's a book by Dr. Fiona Starr and Johnny Zucker. So the information is inspired by this and also I will be putting in the description other sources of information that I've drawn from as well. So I hope you find this an interesting and an entertaining video. Um, I will be moving on to number one, REM sleep. So REM sleep. So we spend about 25% of the night in REM sleep. So for those who don't know what REM sleep is, it's rapid eye movement and that's when we are actually dreaming. So this is the part of the night where our heart rate increases, our breathing rate increases, our bodies sort of move around and jerk around. We may mumble or we may sleepwalk or, or whatever, but we are very active at this point of the evening when we're sleeping or could be during the day if we're sleeping too. But if we're woken up during this portion of um, our sleep cycle, we will typically remember about 80% of our dreams during this cycle. Also, we spend about 600 hours of the year in REM sleep. So I find that incredibly fascinating. That's a, a lot of hours of the year dreaming, right? So another person that I really found influential when it came to dream analysis is obviously the famous Sigmund Freud. So there's a lots of different theories he had and um, I really felt like he had a lot of, um, a lot of, I guess at that time as well, 1899, he wrote his book, The Interpretation of Dreams, that he was such a trailblazer when it came to dream analysis. 
and he really believed dreams did deserve to be researched and studied. So he was like one of the most biggest trailblazers when it came to actually going and studying about dreams and the importance of our dreams. He also fundamentally believed that through dream analysis, we could really work through our de deepest and darkest issues. The ones that we push to the corners of our minds and into the corners of our subconscious and we, oh, I don't want to deal with that. So it all comes up during the night because we're not dealing with it during the day. So he really thought that through dream analysis and what we are actually dreaming about, that you, we could really balance emotional issues and work through how we think and what our behaviors are and um, why we do the things we the way we do them sort of thing. So Sigmund Freud was a very important person when it comes to the history of dream analysis and what, um, what part they play in our daily lives. Okay, so next I'm going to be talking about common themes and symbols in dreams. So common themes, symbols, and people in our dreams. So we always think about how we dream about certain people or dream about certain objects. And it's generally we, how to interpret these is how we interact with those people and with those objects. So sometimes we can look at our friends and look at our family and we can generally sort of say, oh, she's an angry person or she's a, she's a boring person or she's a very happy person. And in our, in our minds, we've sort of summed them up really simply and, and gave them, well, given them some kind of label. And if those types of people come into our dreams and we dream about them being, for example, a controlling and aggressive person, it might be that we are actually dreaming about an aspect of ourselves that is being controlling and aggressive and then manifesting as that person in your dream because you could be in fact controlling and aggressive in certain areas of your life which is why you're dreaming about that person but there is also the other interpretation is that this person that is controlling and aggressive is being a real bother in your life and that you aren't really managing it in your daily life so they started coming up in your your dreams or your nightmares so to speak so it really is up to the dreamer themselves to interpret what that actually means and is it really is it like taking that look inside of yourself and going wow that's something that's brought up something in me that I think I I might be doing in my daily life or is it the person that you're actually dreaming about so another common object that you could be dreaming about is um, working at the computer and you could be working and you could be, you know, sort of writing on your keyboard and drinking a cup of coffee and it's a bit of a boring dream, but picture these same objects in another dream, but instead of busily working on your keyboard and drinking your cup of coffee, you grab the keyboard, you throw it at the screen, you get the coffee, throw that at the screen as well. So both those dreams have the same objects, but you're interacting with both those objects in different ways. So it's how we interact with the people and the objects in our dreams is how we can interpret what the dream actually means and what emotions is it bringing up as well. So I do believe that sometimes spirit will come in and go, hmm, you need to really work on this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you some stuff that um, you can interpret yourself because spirit likes to send us messages and go, this is stuff that you may need to actually work on. I'm gonna send this to you. And it's how we, how we feel when we wake up from those dreams. So we could be waking up and feeling like, oh wow, that oh, I'm dreaming about how I'm feeling in daily life and why is this same feeling coming up? And it's like, wow, I need to really address this. I really need to go in and really uh, think about what I need to work on in my daily life. So, so those are common themes and people and symbols that we may dream about. And uh, it's left up to us to, to really go and dive deep and interpret what it could actually mean. 
So waking up of a morning and writing down what you've dreamt about, especially straight after you've woken up because normally the dream will be sort of fresh and you know, if you sort of wait a little bit too long, you can forget about it. So if you really want to go in and interpret your dreams, it's best to write down what you've dreamt about if you remember uh, when you first wake up. So that's some common themes and symbols. So moving along with common dream themes and objects and characters. So generally our dreams will have one or more of the following themes to it. So we'll have creativity, family, we'll have fear, conflict, anger, death, joy, sadness, love, sex, or change. So it could have one or more of those different themes to it. So when we can sort of categorize our dream into one of those, one or more of those areas, we can start the dream interpretation or analysis and start to really understand what emotions are driving that dream. So I want to start talking about fear-based dreams or nightmares. So a fear-based dream or nightmare normally happens when we're really afraid to confront something in our waking world. So it could be a situation, it could be an event, it could be a person, we're really afraid to confront them, or that it could be a traumatic event that we haven't quite moved on with and we have recurring nightmares about that event. Sometimes it, that recurring nightmare could be slightly different or it could you know, dream up, uh, bring up different emotions because that event had a lot of emotions attached to it. So our subconscious goes, hey, I'm ready to try and deal with this. And it, it comes up in our subconscious, but our waking mind's like, nah, not ready to deal with this yet. So we will dream about it or have nightmares about it until we're ready to, to move through the healing that needs to happen with it. So when we're thinking about something that we're afraid to, to confront in our waking world. So for example, it could be asking your boss for a raise. So this boss may come across in your dream as something that you're afraid of, or you know that you're afraid of in your waking world. So your boss might come across as a big gigantic bird because you're afraid of birds in your waking world and that you come into the office and there's a huge bird at the desk and you're trying to ask it for a raise and you're trembling with fear. So that might be something that comes across in your nightmares because you interpret birds in fear and that's the relationship you've interpreted in the waking world and brought it into the subconscious world. So it's interesting too about dream paralysis as well. So a lot of people uh, have believed through dream paralysis uh, when they've started to become aware that they're paralyzed and they're, they're about to wake up or they're just falling asleep. That uh, So this, this is a very strongly debated subject. So. Um, a lot of people have dreamt that they've been abducted um, during this time because they've become aware that their body's paralyzed and they've hallucinated during that time and that the aliens have come along and abducted them or someone's attacked them during this time or they've dreamt that there's someone in the room and they've come and slammed on their bodies and they've crushed them as well. I know I've had nightmares like that where I've thought aliens have come and abducted me um, during sleep paralysis. So. It's one of those um, interesting subjects when you start reading about it um, that what, what people really believe has happened during that time. So my personal belief, I'm not sure when it comes to dream paralysis. I really thought aliens were coming to get me during that stage as well and I had a nightmare about it. So it's a fascinating subject to really talk about. Now there could be... Um, many more reasons why we have uh, nightmares as well. So especially I haven't gone into children and night terrors and that, I think that's another really um, fascinating one as well to really research about. But uh, apparently another good helpful exercise to move through nightmares is uh, meditation. So meditation's got many great uses, but um, it's believed that if you meditate about the dream, the fearful dream that you could be having, 
uh, and you dream about it, but you start incorporating happy stuff into that dream. So you start visualizing the nightmare that you normally have, but you start bringing love and light and beautiful characters and warm and happy stuff into that visualization that it will help you work through um, that nightmare and help you through moving through the healing process so that you're not as afraid to fall asleep and deal with that nightmare. So I thought that was incredibly fascinating. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is flying dreams and money. All right, so I'll be moving on to that. So I'm going to speak about next about flying dreams and about money dreams. So flying dreams are a really interesting one. A lot of people have dreams about flying at some stage of their lives. So flying is a sign of uh, generally it's a sign of a positive dream. So it's a joyous occasion. You're flying around. You're feeling elevated. It generally means you're not feeling restricted and trapped in your waking world. So that is a great aspect of a flying dream. It also can mean that you have a really great connection with your higher self. So the crown chakra and the third eye chakra that you've got a really good connection with spirit as well. So when we're elevated like that, it means we're elevated through our chakras and we just have a really great connection to spirit. So yeah, looking at flying dreams, it's flying dreams is generally a sign that um, everything's going quite well and smoothly in your waking or physical world and you're, you're not feeling restricted in what you want to do. So the next one talking about money. So money is a transactional tool that we use in our waking worlds and it is referred to as something of value. So it's also referred to our sense of safety and security as well. So when we think about money and a tool of value. So in a dream, if you're giving a lot of away of your value and this could be parts of yourself. So if you're giving away a lot in your waking world and you're feeling really depleted, you may be dreaming about money and just giving it all away because a lot of your parts of yourself that you value is just getting given away. So that could be a reason of having a dream of giving away a lot of money. Another obvious reason could be that you're just spending too much in your physical world and that there's more money going out than, than there is coming in. So that could be an obvious reason for it. Uh, another dream about receiving of money. So if we're receiving money quite happily in our dreams, it means we're receiving something of value from others and that we're feeling safe and secure by receiving that in our dreams. So we're receiving money and we're happy to receive help and assistance. Um, if we're desperately trying to reach for money that's sort of getting, we're not quite getting it all in our dreams, but it's sort of coming in dribs and drabs, it means that we're struggling um, for that, that sense of support in our waking world and could be the obvious reason of we're struggling to sort of get by and we're just getting dribs and drabs in our waking lives. Another um, aspect of a, a dream uh, with money incorporated is a transactional dream. So having a dream of like say a handshake and a, a financial transaction that goes through with no problems generally means that um, whatever financial uh, issues you could be having at the time are going to actually work out. So it's um, spirit's way of coming across with the meaning of uh, well, the helping hand of everything's going to be okay and they're just letting you know that everything's going to be all right in regards to uh, finances and money and whatever uh, worries you have at that time. So that's um, interesting about flying dreams and money. So next I'm going to be talking about teeth and I'm going to be talking about school and work. So next I'm going to be talking about teeth, school and work. So teeth is a really interesting one in our dreams. 
So when we're dreaming about our teeth, there could be really varied reasons for why we are dreaming about them. So a lot of the time it's about our appearance and our anxieties connected to our appearances. So if we're dreaming about our teeth all falling out and we're really, really nervous to show our face to our friends and family in our dreams, it could be because we're very anxious about the aging process and what it's doing to our appearance. So it could be that that's why you're dreaming about your teeth falling out. Now there's a few other different reasons why you could be dreaming about your teeth as well. So for example, teeth that are rotten. Now this, is, this could be relationships that are ending or are not going very well. Teeth that are clean, white and shiny. Good financial security and healthy relationships. Teeth that are perfectly straight and aligned. Good strong current relationships. Seeing the roots of your teeth. So thinking about the stability of current relationships. Seeing rotten roots of your teeth concerned with the stability of relationships, seeing healthy roots of the teeth, happy with the current state of relationships and their foundations. Brushing your teeth could be giving a, a sum of money away to help someone out. A tooth being pulled out could be serving as a warning not to act hastily on something. Review your options. Something lodged between your teeth. A complicated issue or matter that may be on the verge of getting resolved. One tooth bigger than the rest of your teeth could be worried that something in your life may turn out to become a great disappointment. So as you can see that dreaming about teeth can be a real symbolism for dreaming about your relationships and the, the current stages that they're at as well. So I really find that fascinating that it's connected to appearance, appearances and relationships school so dreams of school so everyone has a very different memory of school so this one in particular is really left up to the dreamer to interpret because everyone has had a very individual experience in this regard so if you're dreaming about a bully or a teacher or someone at school that was mean to you or nasty uh, that is really very much going to be about what the dream is about and that your relationship with that time and how your how that hasn't been quite resolved for you yet. Um, if you're dreaming about a school ground that is everything is happy and everyone's going along quite well, um, it could mean that you're having a child life uh, childlike enjoyment to your life right now and that everything is sort of really really happy and joyous. So it really comes down to your relationship with school and learning into institutions and what your relationship is like with those place types of places. The next one is work. So work is generally about our sense of stability and security in our waking worlds. So if we're going to work and everyone's quite productive and it's a nice and happy place to be in, it means that success and happiness and security is happening in your waking world. So if you're going to work in your dream and it's all stressful and everyone's really like there's papers flying about, the printers are jamming and nothing's working correctly and everyone's angry, it could mean that your waking world is that work is creating frustrations for you and you're feeling overwhelmed by your workload and there's too much going on as well. If you're going to work and it's a really vast and empty place and that there's nowhere, no one to be seen, it could mean that your workplace is very, um, what I want to say, uh, very boring and it's just sort of like, oh, it's, it's not fulfilling you. It, and it could be that you're not getting that sense of fulfillment from your work. Uh, in your physical world and it might be time to move on from the workplace that you're at. So there's lots of different reasons why you could be dreaming about work in a certain way and it's definitely connected to your sense of security in your, your waking world and your sense of enjoyment and success as well. Um, if, your if the door to your work is closed off when you're walking towards it, 
It could mean that there's an area in your workplace that is blocked off to you that you're hoping to have access to as well. So that's it about schoolwork and teeth. So next I'm going to talk about being early or late for events and journeys. So we've all had those dreams about missing a train or a bus or a ride somewhere. And um, so this can generally mean that we aren't quite reaching the goals we want to reach in our physical world or we're trying to attain something in our physical world and we're not quite there. And um, that can be representative of missing a trip in our dreams. Uh, also being early in a dream, it can be a single of anxiety about waiting for something to happen, but it's not happening. And in our dream, we could be going, yes, we're ready. We're ready for it. Why is it not happening? But you know, I'm just so ready. Um, so that could be a signal that in your physical world, you're wanting something to happen, but it's just not happening yet. So that could be the interpretation of being early or late for something. Um, next one I'll talk about is natural forces. So this is a really connected to deep emotional feelings we have from within us. So if we're thinking about uh, certain natural forces, so we've got powerful storms or volcanoes or eruptions that are happening in there. If they're in a really big, strong rage, it's generally emotions within, within ourselves that aren't being expressed. Um, if you're dreaming about a calm breeze or, you know, just a beautiful blue sky, it could be that emotions are actually quite balanced at the moment and everything's feeling nice and calm and relaxed. So that um, you can see the differences between the two there. So reflecting on the strengths of these, uh, these weathers or natural forces will really, really help interpret what kind of emotional stuff is, could be going on in your dreams. Water, oceans, and ice is linked to the feelings we have about our relationship. So water is definitely, even in tarot, it's all linked to um, our relationships and how we express um, our love for, for each other. So that is very much about our intu intuition as well and our unconscious and the decisions we make. Fire is connected to destruction, rebirth, passions, creativity, and purification as well. Uh, earthquakes are symbolic of a very core of ourselves. So it's connected to our purpose and our identity. Volcanoes represent changes going on around us. Uh, storms are the bringer of challenges as skies symbolize the heights we want to reach. So it's very interesting. So thinking about the intensity of these natural forces will really help to establish what the dream could be about. So if it's a really strong ocean that's got crashing waves and that it might be that relationships are you know in turmoil right now volcanoes that are erupting it could be that there's changes going on around us and we're very angry about it so you can really um really sort of dig deep and go oh that that could be what it is with the strengths of the the natural force that it, um that is coming along in the dreams so next I'm going to be talking about animals. So lastly, I'm going to be talking about animals in our dreams and how they are reflected in our dreams. So they, they can come across in many and varied ways. They can be representative of the characters in our waking world. So it really is dependent on the relationship we have with particular animals in our waking world to how they're reflected in our dreams. Uh, animals can also represent our suppressed emotions. They can also be re representative of aspects of ourselves that need healing. So there really, there is so many varied ways that animals can come across that it's really left up to the dreamer to interpret how that animal is making them feel in the dream and that is definitely the most important thing. So firstly, lions are representative of power, leadership and protectiveness. So if we see a lion in our dream that is sort of shy and scared, it might be a call to be a little bit more brave about something in your waking world. Uh, alternatively, if the, dry, if the lion is just sort of calm and relaxed, it, it can really mean that everything in your life is it's pretty good. Everything's okay at the moment. 
if the lion is protecting something, there is the call to be a little bit more careful about your next steps in your waking world. Dogs. So do dogs are very much the instinctive part of our nature. So if we're dreaming about a dog and the dog is sort of licking its wounds, it might be that we're needing to attend to any wounding and healing in our waking world. So if your dog is um, very close to you in your waking world and it's something that you want to protect, there might be it might be representing someone in your dream that you really, really care about and you want to protect them as well. So there might be someone in your waking world that you're really worried about. Um, alternatively, if the dog is lashing out at someone as well, it might be that you um, that you are feeling really suppressed in an area of anger and that you want to lash out and say something to someone but you're feeling suppressed about that. So um, very much about dogs and um, instincts and how that is reflected in your life and how you feel about dogs yourself. Now cats can be representative of the feminine parts of ourselves. So. Uh, if we're really afraid of that fe feminine part of our side, um, we might see cats in our dreams sort of lashing out at us or biting us or attacking us. Um, they're also connected to the spiritual uh, world as well. So if we're um, afraid of that part of ourselves that's spiritual, like witchy sort of stuff and um, anything to do with voodoo and all that sort of stuff and we're really afraid of anything that's supernatural we might see cats in our dreams really lashing out at us um, also interesting too about cats um, yeah you could be resisting parts of yourself that um, you really you want to sort of tap into but that you're finding difficult to to open up that that box so to speak um, black cats in dreams are symbolic of good luck now snakes. Dreams of snakes can be really, really fascinating. So they can represent many things, wisdom, jealousy, evil, power, deception, um, even the cycles of life from death to rebirth. So especially if the snake in its dream is biting its own tail, it's a symbol of the, the cycle of death and rebirth, um, the symbol of yeah, that, that circular part of life, so to speak. Um, dreams of snakes attacking you or attacking it um, can be representative of people or conflicts in your life that you're trying to overcome. A snake shedding its skin can be uh, really symbolic of you being able to shed the old in your life and accept the new changes. So snakes shedding skin is a really great sign in dreams. Um, and dreams of snakes that are hard to see or that a shadow could be symbolic of secrets of that you feel people are hiding from you as well. So those are a few different types of animals that uh, it could be reflected in your dreams. There's many, many more that I haven't addressed in this video, but um, feel free to do your own research when it comes to dreams. This is the research that I have done and I found very, very informative. I find this subject so interesting and I'll probably do more videos about this, but if you like this video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe to my channel if you like my other videos as well. And thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you guys soon.